Good morning, everyone. Morning. 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 Hopefully you'll all be able to see me and hear me okay. I, I haven't so. got a big picture. I haven't got a big picture of you. I don't know what I've done. <laughs> oh. right, there we are. <laughs> and welcome to everyone who's watching us live on Facebook as well. We're um trying a new way to stream our services to involve more people. So very warm welcome to you all. Um, hopefully you will have been able to find an order of service for, for this um, service, which can be found if you haven't got it, can be found on our website uh, under Worship at Home. And if you scroll down, you'll see the orders of service for today there. Um, just to check that um, Christine's here. I am. For our prayers. And Becky, are you here? Yes. Sorry, I was on mute. Yes, I'm here. That's right. Yeah, brilliant. So we've got everyone we need to for this uh, service to run smoothly. So we'll just hold a moment of quiet and then um, I'll ring the bell as normal, as we would normally have at St. James. And then we'll begin with our opening hymn, All My Hope on God is Founded. of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. 
as we meet here in the name of Christ. We meet knowing that we are each named by him, but also called by him to do his will and to follow him. As we join together for this Eucharist, may we be strengthened now to follow him today. And as we do, let us first begin by turning to our Lord uh, to confess and to receive his forgiveness. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray the collect for the first Sunday after Trinity. So let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we're now going to hear from Becky, who's going to read um, from the book of Genesis, chapter 18. And hopefully she'll appear on the screen as she does. There we go. Reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre, while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried to the entrance of his tent to meet them, and he bowed low to the ground. He said, If I have found favour in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way. Now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered, do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three sears of the finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set those before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife, Sarah? They asked him. There in the tent, he said. 
Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, after I am worn out and my Lord is so old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. There, these 12, Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and into no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. This is the gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. For those of you who are parents, uh, choosing what to call your children I'd imagine wasn't without importance or meaning. Perhaps you went down the line of uh, remembering a former family member, someone who'd been important to you in your lives. Perhaps uh, it was about the meaning of a name or the sound, or just that you wanted a short name rather than a long name. For choosing uh, for Jem and uh, Laurie, we sort of uh, thought long and hard about what we would call them. And we like Jem and uh, as the sound of the name. And George comes from, uh, his middle name comes from uh, Sophie's dad. He, he passed away a few years ago. And then for Laurie, it was, we got that name from the, the book, um, Little Women. We like the character and, and the name. And Benedict, because, um, of our association with St Albans. We didn't want to have Auburn as his middle name, but we like Benedict and, and the meaning of blessing. Um, and we were quite delighted when he was able to be baptised on the 10th of August, which is the feast day of St Lawrence. I'm sure you have uh, stories behind names of those for you who have children, but 
even if you do not have children, we still have our own names that our parents gave us. The story uh, for my name or, and my brothers as well is that my parents really wanted to have three girls. And so they spent a long time um, thinking about what they would call uh, us if we were girls. And if you want to find out what mine would have been, you can uh, join me for coffee afterwards. But um, in the end, they had three boys. And uh, good, good Christian parents that they were, we were each named after a saint and, and, a, and a letter in the Bible, or book in the Bible. So I'm Timothy Hugh. I've got brothers Gregory Luke and Aidan Mark. But even if you don't know the reasons behind your name or the reason why it was chosen, every name still has its meaning. I wonder if anyone knows the meaning and wants to perhaps shout out what their name means, if they know what it means. My name is Happiness. Happiness, that's nice. Yeah, Felicity. Well, my, my names are Christine and Mary, so I think they're fairly obviously linked to Christ and his mother. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I was named for other reasons, but those, yeah. Anyone else want to know what their name is or what it means? My name is Little Mary, Maureen. Little Mary. Little Mary. There was a, a baptism I did earlier in the year where... Um, it was tradition for the culture they came from that um, the middle, one of the middle names was always the day of the week you were born on, which I thought was a really wonderful way to remember, um, you know, where you were, what, what day of the week you were born on, which is a good, good idea. Um, and I'm sure you have names. Mine, Timothy, means honouring God, Timotheus. Um, and perhaps we might share some of those over, over coffee afterwards. But Luckily, some of us may have names that we like and some of us um, may not be so lucky and we may not perhaps like our name. But we are so much more than our names and its meanings. We are a story. We are an individual. We are a living and breathing human uniquely created in the image of God. And as part of our gospel from Matthew, we hear the names of the 12 apostles. Not the only disciples, because uh, we know there were lots more, and there were especially women as well. But we do know that these are the 12 that Jesus chose to specifically carry out an important piece of work. We have Simon Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, another James, obviously a popular name, Thaddeus, another Simon, and of course Judas. They are literally named and each name is a person, a story, an individual, as we are too. And these 12 are called, are summoned to do something. Jesus gives them a specific task. And if we want to know what that task is, we just have to look a little bit further in scripture. Because in Matthew, we have to go back to chapter 5. Chapter 5 to 7, for those of you who know, is where we find the Sermon on the Mount. And this is where Jesus tells us what, it, what the kingdom of God is like. We have the Beatitudes, we have teaching on prayer and, and, and how, we should, how we should live together as, as followers of the kingdom. But Jesus doesn't stop there. Chapters 8 to 9, Jesus then goes out and lives these, this preaching. He lives out this, what he means by the kingdom by going around Galilee, we'd heard a little bit of it there at the start of our gospel, preaching about the kingdom, curing diseases, healing people. He heals people and he meets with amazing success, so much so that the Pharisees try to find a way to kill him. And he needs a way that he can carry on this important work, even though he knows that his days on earth are numbered. And he says to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out more labourers into his harvest. And then Jesus 
names and calls the twelve to this exact purpose. But note, he does not force them. He does not tell them they have to do it. He chooses them to serve them, to serve him. And I wonder how lovely it would be to know a bit more about these twelves, their gifts, their personalities, their sense of humour. But what we do know is that they are all ordinary people. In amongst that twelve, we have the radical rebels against Roman rule. We have the Roman collaborators. We have the fishermen. We have the common and the uncommon, the rich and poor, the educated and the uneducated. He called ordinary people just like you and me. In fact, Jesus calls everyone. And he calls them, he calls us to do something incredible. The call to them go out, and if you read the rest of chapter 10, they are sent out to do the same as Jesus, to heal, to perform miracles, to proclaim the kingdom of God. He calls them and us without pressure, but he definitely doesn't call us into a life that is easy. For we know that the life of Jesus on this earth was not an easy one. So why should we expect otherwise? But Jesus calls his disciples to move forward, to never stand still, and to proclaim the kingdom. We might perhaps hear that story and think, it couldn't be me, Lord. I'm not good enough. I'm too old. I'm too young. I don't have the right gifts that I think the church needs right now. And we only have to look back at the story we heard in Genesis. Um, and part of that story where um, you know, the real miracle there was that there was a, a woman, Sarah, who was beyond childbearing age. She did not think that she could be the one to have a child and through which through we get Abraham and we get um, all the, uh, the patriarchs after that to be the children of Israel. She did not think it could be her, but God can work through us. And we may feel like laughing sometimes, but God has other ideas. He calls us because the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into that harvest. The most amazing church I've ever been to was uh, Al Dubara Church in Cairo, central Cairo. A stone's throw from Tahrir Square, where the revolutions took place in 2011 and 2013. Army tanks and highly armed soldiers literally were outside the front door. Yet it was the most alive church I've been to, despite the fact they were under immense pressure and persecution. And the, watch, the phrase they had that guided all that they did as the church was that they are not, was this one, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. If people do not go and tell anyone about Jesus, then in this turmoil, people will not know who to look for. And this church was growing. It was amazing. They sent missionaries out to the war-torn Lebanon and Syria. They were overflowing with people and with the life of Christ. And if it's true of Egypt, it's certainly true of the UK now. There are not enough labourers to answer the call. Jesus calls us to follow him, to be like him. And remember that Jesus never forces anyone to change their views. It's always voluntary. We need more labourers here to show that we are all equal in the eyes of God. And if anyone is not, then we would, should want to do something about it. We need more labourers here to proclaim the good news of the gospel that people have probably encountered during this time of pandemic when they experience the love of neighbours, of strangers but perhaps they don't, do not know its source. And we need the church to be called 
to be a place of justice and equality. And we can do that because we can point to a saviour, to a Lord who loves us all. Who not only loves us, but calls us to follow him and to be like him, not just in word, but in deed as well. So the question I'd like to leave you with now is how are you answering your call to follow Jesus? What are you doing now to answer that call that perhaps you weren't doing four months ago before all this crisis started? And what might you be doing next month that perhaps you haven't discerned the call for this month? Jesus is calling you, he's calling me, he's calling his whole church to do something now, to be sent out in his name and to continue the work of proclaiming his kingdom. Question is, are we ready? Amen. So I invite you to stand if you wish as we proclaim our faith in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. For the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and united with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Heavenly Father, we bring before you your church and we pray for your church throughout the world as we learn to cope with new demands on how to worship, how to minister. We pray for your church leaders, especially our Archbishop Justin and the Archbishop of York elect Stephen as he prepares for this significant role in the Church of England and giving thanks for the ministry of John St. Amu as he starts his retirement. We pray for our own diocesan bishops, Alan, Richard and Michael, and all our church leaders. Make us all ready to hear your call. And we give thanks for our own clergy team, for Andy on furlough with his family, for the rector Guy on holiday, and Father Tim, as he is looking after the parish now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your world, a world that you made 
beautiful and lovely. When you had created it, you saw that it was very good. Humankind doesn't seem to be making a very good job of looking after what you have given us. And so we pray for all those who are in positions of authority and leadership, that you will guide them in the decisions they make and the words that they use. Grant them wisdom, integrity, truth, honesty and justice. We pray for all who have been affected by severe weather in the world, by pl the plagues of locusts, and closer to home on the third anniversary of the Grenfell Tower tragedy. We pray that the problems it exposed can be resolved before any more time elapses. And as it has been highlighted by the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis, we pray for a gr your inspiration to give a growing understanding of the facts of racism and all the other isms that so damage our relationships with one another. We are all made in your image. And at the moment especially, we pray for awareness and humility amongst those of us who have white privilege. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. In our local community, in our country, we pray for all those with important tasks to do. Our political leaders indeed, but also all our medical staff and those who support them. Researchers, cleaning staff who have such a heavy responsibility, transport workers, shop staff, delivery drivers and posties, education staff, care home staff, especially where they have residents who don't understand what's happening, funeral directors, all those who work in the emergency services, all those work who's necessary, whose work is necessary for keeping our country running. And in this time when we've all been under lockdown. We pray for all who have been severely affected by it, who have been lonely, separated from those they love, where it's exacerbated their mental health problems, triggered increased abuse, given them fears for their financial security. And so we pray for your blessing on the work of the Red Trust in Bushy and its food bank and all other organisations working to relieve the stresses that it has all caused. And if you have a task for us, Lord, help us to hear your voice and act on your call. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sick in mind, in body or in spirit, at home or in hospital. We bring before you those on our parish prayer list. Sally, Sarah, April, Sophie, Sylvia, Elizabeth, Enid, Dilhani, Judith. So we continue to pray for all those who are sick and in need of your healing care, Lord. All those on our prayer list now. We pray, Lord, at this time, grant them peace 
wholeness and the knowledge of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. yeah. Lord, we pray for all those who have recently died. We pray, Lord, they may know the abundance of your presence. We ask, Lord, that all those who mourn may know of your comfort. May they rest, it's rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. And so, Lord, we pray for ourselves. We ask that you may help us to hear your call and be given strength and courage to follow, both now and all that comes in the future. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to um, stand for the peace, if you wish. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share in his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Yeah. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with everybody. Peace be with everyone, yes. Peace be with you. Peace be with everyone. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. So we're just going to come to uh, the offertory and we're going to, um, James has very kindly provided some music for us to play while I set the altar up. But just a reminder that um, this is normally the time in church when we would be um, offering up what God has given us uh, to serve the church here. And as I'm sure all of you can imagine, the church is um, across the whole country is in, as along with all charities and, and businesses, is in, in a difficult situation. And so if you are able to give, if you haven't given for a while, if you're able to give today um, just to support that ministry as we seek to find a path through um, through these challenging times. Um, you'll find in the order of service, you'll be able to find um, a way to do that electronically, but please do get in touch with um, either um, Felicity or Greg, if you would like to um, talk a bit more about um, giving and, and what you can do to support the church at the moment. So Christian will now play um, some organ music. Okay, and I'll... <laughs> Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice 
may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things. It was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so far, the calling to mind his death on the cross. His perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world. Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Our Lady Mary, St. James, St. Paul, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unit and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever.
as our Saviour taught us, so we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. I invite you now, as I receive here, you may wish to uh, just spend a moment uh, making an act of spiritual communion. And then uh, we're going to hear a, a recording by the St James's Choir of a previous, uh, from uh, I think back in November or sometime like that. Um, the Body of Christ. the blood of Christ.
May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. <coughs> so just a few uh, notices to make today. Uh, first of all, to say a big thank you, uh, first of all, to uh, James. All the, the, the first hymn you heard and the hymn we're going to hear uh, at the end of the service are actually the voices of, uh, of our own choir. So thank you so much to James and all the members of our choir who have contributed to that recording because it really does make a difference to know that we're hearing um, our own community singing. Uh, also thanks to uh, Christian who has um, certainly been um, overseeing all of this service so that we can make it more of a, um, uh, involve more people. So. Um, so Christine can involved um, and Becky and all, and all of you as well and all of that's been live streamed onto Facebook so those of you who those who would normally watch it that way can still uh, watch it in that normal way so massive thank you to, to Christian for enabling this um, this uh, to happen today just so in terms of notices of things coming up so first of all this evening at six o'clock um, Christine is leading us uh, for our evening service um, and obviously, if you want to know a bit more about that, we can speak to Christine after the service, but also um, there's a nice video on uh, the Facebook page which details what's going to happen in that service. In terms of other things um, coming up this week, so we've got our Bible studies. So we're looking at the letter to the Ephesians, which is Monday at eight or Thursday at two. They're both the same uh, material. And we've just started to get into the letter of the Ephesians where it's sort of talking, talking about how do we practically live out the calling that we have upon us as the church. So if you really want to explore that a bit further about what you might be called to do, um, the Bible study in Ephesians is a great place uh, to start if you have the time. Uh, at um, Wednesday at 11 o'clock, I've got my um, coffee um, morning I'll be hosting here. So um, please do join me. Uh, the code for that should be in your order of service at the back. And then just to give you a brief update on the reopening, You'll know if you've been watching the news that um, churches could actually have been reopened from yesterday. Um, and what's going to happen here at, uh, in Bushy Parish is that we're going to wait until the 24th of June, which is our next PCC. We're going to discuss it when Guy's back from his leave and we're going to set up a task group to look at how we might um, reopen our churches for private prayer. So not just um, St James, which traditionally has always been opened. Um, and also how we then might actually explore reopening the church for um, public worship, which we know will happen at some point in the future. So um, nothing yet from, from this parish in terms of opening for individual prayer, but there is a plan and a process in place so that that can take place. And I think unless there's anything else from uh, anyone else would like to mention, I think we'll um, sing our final hymn, Will You Come and Follow Me?
And so just before we finish, just to remind you that if you want to stay for Parish Coffee, just um, if you're on Zoom already, just stay where you are and we'll start our coffee, go and get your coffee after the service. And if you'd like to join us and you're watching on Facebook Live, then um, just come and find the Zoom code in the back of your order service and we'll see you there in a few minutes. So let's pray. The Lord be with you. peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always amen go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ amen